In the uh, following session, um, I'll be uh, demonstrating how to use the gradient to create uh, some sort of a layer fog or distance uh, fog, for example. Um, so on the, this particular scene here, I have uh, it's, it's basically some kind of some sort of grid that has uh, polygon or quad being extruded to create this sort of city. And uh, we'll go in the render tree here and actually start to use the gradient to create this sort of layer fog. Uh, one of the actual uh, step here actually to uh, uh, to to get the, to get the uh, actual gradient to show up as some sort of is uh, first uh, you need to put some sort of uh, texture projections on all the objects. Um, in this case uh, all the buildings is, is made of is part of the same uh, mesh or the same same object. If you do have a scene that contains a lot of uh, different objects, it is uh, it is important that uh, what you do is is you multi-select all these objects. You create a group by clicking group here, and once the group is selected, whenever you create texture projection, the actual texture support only one texture support will be created for all the objects in the group, and the actual texture support will basically bind to all the objects automatically, such that you have a unique texture projection that is called the same name on all the objects so you can actually start to share this texture projection you know by plugging in let's say for example the same uh, let's same render tree over the group for example to be able to share a material or use the material library to share the the, the material in this case uh, since it's only one object i've created a a uh, a uh, planar projection that is projected on the side and we'll be using that to Put uh, to use the and connect the gradient in order to create this sort of uh, incandescence from the actual light. So we'll we'll connect this to the incandescence. So as you can see now, we start to see the actual uh, the actual effect right here, and we'll go uh, here and start to uh, set this to to be some some sort of uh, black and white gradient. We'll actually invert the uh, illumination here and do this. So now we start to have more or less a uh, sort of a... now you can see that the actual texture projection will need to use planar projection and not explicit texture projection. Now we can see that we're creating some sort of a very very f <laughs> intense fog and we can actually lower this uh, luminance information by creating some sort of uh, uh, some sort of uh, transparent fog information. And the reason why we create this is, is it's not actually creating or rendering any sort of volume fog. It's actually painting the fog onto the buildings as such that it will uh, give you the it will give you the uh, impression of, of a real fog. So it's it's just a way to actually fake fog and, and has very low cost in terms of rendering. So <clears throat> This is the first uh, one of the first step. The second step is to create a fog based on distance, and the way to uh, to do this is by using the actual uh, the actual intersection point. Whenever mentally renders a given pixel, a given sample, for example, it will hit the surface, and we can actually extract the x y z position of that intersection point. And to be able to extract this information, we'll use the state vector shader. The vector shader will give uh, information uh, during ray tracing process, either the uh, vector for the uh, camera rays, the origin of the, the actual camera, the intersection point, and this is the one we currently uh, need to be able to do this. Uh, uh, and, and by selecting intersection point, it will return this, uh, this XYZ uh, position of, of, the, of the ray uh, hit point and return it uh, directly in the render tree. Uh, by default, whenever uh, all this ray tracing information is is expressed in what we call an internal space, it's a it's basically a space that is not world space, it's not camera space, it's not screen space, it's some sort of ray tracing internal space. So it is important that whenever you use this information, you do a what we call a space conversion. So the way to do this is by going node and clicking conversion and and pick vector coordinate converter and we'll uh, we'll c connect this one to the input and edit the shader and actually this is a point so we'll say that the type of information we'll be processing is a point and we want to say 
bring back this this information to the world so that will actually bring it back to XSI world uh, coordinate system now we have this actually uh, I will not use the world coordinate but I'll use the camera coordinate the reason why is that we really want to have the Z value according to the camera so we'll be extracting the Z component of the the camera information so we've taken a, a point into space and converted back to camera space so uh, such that we'll extract really the Z value so we'll do a conversion here so we'll uh, go from uh, vector to scalar so the next step here is actually color to voila and what we'll do is uh, we'll extract the Z value. Now the Z value, the, the camera is always looking towards the Z negative. So it is really important to actually uh, invert or, or uh, actually put a, uh, what we call an absolute. So removing the, uh, doing an invert actually, well, mul multiplying by minus one such that it will give you a positive value. So to do this, what you need to do is go under Math, Scalar, uh, Unary, and Unary means it's going to apply the the operation directly on the parameter. So you could say absolute. So it will uh, it will basically remove the negative value, or you could say negate. Uh, so absolute value should do fine in this case. Now the the next step is to actually get a, a gradient mixer. And the gradient mixer is uh, will be used to actually shade the surface of the ob object based on distance. So we'll connect it to input, and we'll uh, we'll need to adjust the input active range. So because this building may be like 100 units away, for example. So we'll just put 100 for now, and give it a test. So let's connect it to incandescence. So now we start to see a little bit of, of uh, the shading information. So let's go back to gradient. We see red and a little bit of blue. So we see really that it's probably 25%. So it's probably more like 25. Now we start to see a little bit more of, of uh, value here. So it's really up to here. The, the further, uh, the point that is really, f really far away is more like blue. So this value needs to be divided by 2. So 12. Now we get the full gradient color here being added. So uh, let's uh, let's actually do this, and then we'll just do a black and white, and we'll st and we'll slowly you know dim down uh, the actual gradient such we have this this sense of of fog with distance. Now what we could do is is take this gradient color and actually start to multiplying them or do what we call additive color. And and the way to do this is by picking a mixer two color, for example, and doing uh, doing an additive color such that we'll see the the fog in the street and we'll see the fog based on distance. So now let's connect uh, this onto weight here, and we'll do um, let's say add. It's going to uh, basically add the two values together, and that should actually create the effect that we want. So now we get both fog being being described. So we could say that uh, somehow the the let's say the street fog is more like bluish color. So we could start to make it tinted slightly to blue, and and actually make the gradient uh, here more like tinted to green, for example. So we could start to create this 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 very very stylized ambience using the gradient shader. So that summarizes the the session for for the gradient you to create fog and I just hope you uh, enjoy this session. Thank you.